Hello and welcome to another tutorial on uh, my YouTube channel. Usually I cover a lot of uh, physics-based vehicles and uh, with this technique we use physics in order to make our vehicle drive around. But actually I found also um, some use for kinematic vehicles. So if you are doing a simple um, racing game where you want to drive a vehicle around, there is a much easier way to create your own vehicle and make it drive. And that's what I want to cover in this tutorial. So to start with, uh, um, we got yourself a nice uh, low poly model. And I'm learning a bit of uh, low poly modeling techniques and I would like to give a shout out to Infensia and his uh, YouTube channel where he has a lot of uh, tricks, especially on keeping the topology right. And uh, I have also created for this tutorial a racing track, which we'll be importing into Arial and uh, use it to drive around. So without further ado, let's get started. And uh, back to the car. I just want you to note that uh, we have the body of the car in the structure here on the right. And then the wheels, rear and front, and the steering wheel are parented to it. This parenting allows us to import the car directly into Arial and have the engine automatically create the rig for us. About the steering wheel, it's very important in order to get its rotation right that the local rotation axis, and I've switched here from global to local, is directed in this way. So you see the red axis, the X is the axis around which the steering wheel can rotate. For the rest, there isn't uh, much to do besides exporting to FBX and then importing in Radial as we are seeing shortly. If you want to create your own car, you can use uh, the same setup. And if you want to use pre-made cars, you can easily go to the Epic Launcher, then browse to a Marketplace and under Free, Permanently Free Collection, if you scroll down, you will find the Vehicle Variety Pack. So these vehicles are also suitable for the technique that I'm going to show shortly. Let's use uh, a real engine 5 early access 2 for this uh, tutorial. I'm going to launch it. And the engine has a slightly different interface uh, from uh, the previous version. So we can use it also to get a bit acquainted with it. Uh, let's select games, blank, and then let's create a project which we'll call kinematic vehicle. Create. We don't need any starter content or directory thing. So once the level opens, let's do a few things. So number one, I'm selecting the floor and I want to make it uh, bigger. So let's say 50 by 50. That allows us to then place the track on it. Um, I'm also going to take the player start and delete it with the delete key, because we don't need that. And next, we're gonna go down here to the content drawer and under content create with the right click new folder uh, one for the core car to which we are going to import the car and I will make the FBX available for everyone to play with. So in my case it's on the documents blender and it's called F1 car low poly. Now very very important in order for the parenting technique to work is to check skeletal mesh. So I really seeing this now as a static mesh, or actually a bunch of static mesh, the body and the wheels and the steering wheel. If we wanted to force it to be a skeletal mesh, we have to click here. And there is nothing else to touch. Just click import all. And we have a warning related to the material, so that's easy to fix uh, um, because of the coloring technique that Infense is using. There are a few gradient maps that are in there. But actually the only one we need is uh, the first one, the others are just redundant. So we can open the skeletal mesh, huh? make sure that we assign the same material to the three slots. The black one is uh, for the steering wheel, so that's fine, like it is. And then we save. And now that we have done back that back into the content drawer, we can just remove the redundant materials just to clean up a bit. Okay, nothing major. Back to the content. Let's right click a new folder and this time we'll be importing the track. 
create the folder, import, and it's called racing track, open. So this time it's a static mesh. Um, what we don't want to do is to generate collisions. So let's uncheck that and import all. The reason is that we are going to drive a kinematic car and a kinematic car will make it um, respond to collisions, but we don't want it to collide with the track it's sitting on to. Okay. So once we have the track and it should show up in a moment, here it is. Let's take it and drag it to the level. And actually, once it's selected, just click this um, arrow here to reset its position. And then we want to take it a bit higher. Uh, 15 might not be enough, so let's go 20. Yeah. So now it doesn't sit into the, the floor mesh. And if we take an overview, that's how the track looks like okay brilliant so once the track is in place we just go back to the car and uh, what we want to do is a uh, few things here so first of all let's fix the physics asset and the physics asset of the car has been automatically created on import and it looks like this capsule which we don't want so we click on it and then we press delete to remove it and here on this uh, little gear we do show all bones and then we click on the root bone which is the body right click uh, and uh, we can either do uh, add shape from here but more easily we go here in the bottom right corner and then we choose single convex hole and press add bodies and as you see it has automatically created the collision body for uh, the car and then we can control left mouse button click on the wheel bones and this time we will also generate bodies for them but they will be spheres and uh, you know this is not going to be a physics car so in principle these physics bodies are only used for collisions but the wheels in particular we need to know the radius for some later calculations and it's useful to add spheres to them so we can read back the radius from the spheres so I've selected the sphere, I'm just going to click Add Bodies, and now we have uh, collision spheres for the wheels. Okay, let's save, and let's go back to the content browser. Uh, let's right-click on the skeletal mesh, and then do Create an in Blueprint. And just leave it with the default name that the engine is giving to it. We will use the an in Blueprint to animate the car so that uh, we can see the wheels spinning and uh, we can also see uh, the front one turning because of steering and uh, it's the same for the steering wheel okay we'll do use bone animation for that so we're ready to um, create the car so what we are going to do is uh, under content right click new folder blueprints so let's keep this clean and under that we're going to right click blueprint class Pawn because we want to be able to control the car and we are going to call it BP kinematic car so let's open that and uh, first of all let's add skeletal mesh so click on plus add then type skeletal you see skeletal mesh add let's call it uh, you know, car and then we drag it on top of the existing root uh, so that we replace it with the skeletal mesh selected, we go to the right here and we select the only skeletal mesh available, which is the one we imported earlier. And here is our car. It's another thing that we want to do uh, under animation. And I don't like much this interface because sometimes it's hiding the fields. So you have to open it up. Uh, I hope that in the next version it's a bit more automatic. Uh, under animation, animation mode, and anim class, you will choose the Formula One Carlo Polyx Skeleton Anime Blueprint, which is the one we just created. Okay, so once that is assigned, always compile and save. And uh, we want to have a camera attached to our car, so we're gonna, with the skeleton mesh selected, let's add uh, spring arm. And uh, with the spring arm selected, we add the camera. 
And actually, we want to call this chase camera because we're going to add later on an in car camera so we can see how it feels like to be in the driver's seat and, and drive this car around. Uh, with the spring arm selected, let's make sure that the camera, the chase camera, is in a decent position. We need to make the spring arm a bit longer and probably also rotate it a bit so we have a slightly higher view. Okay, compile and save. And now what we want to do is have a look at our car. It's in the level, so first uh, we um, click here and make it auto-possessable by player zero. Compile and save, and close. Let's go to the content drawer under blueprint and take our car and place it somewhere in the level, maybe here. And let's F to focus on it uh, and as you might see it's slightly sunk into the ground so we want to raise it a bit and we can be more precise by changing uh, the grid amount so maybe we want it to be at this height yeah that seems good and then if we take a bit more of a, of a top view we want to rotate it a bit so it's parallel to the track yeah, something like that. And here we have a preview from the camera connected to the spring arm. It looks good. I might change it a bit, lower it a bit, uh, change the angle. But uh, for the time being, it's good. Okie dokie. So let's uh, go back inside the blueprint for the car. And we don't need the event actor begin overlap. Uh, we will need tick, but later. What we want to do is uh, start adding some input so we can drive our car around. And uh, let's go to Edit, Project Settings, Input. And then we're going to add a few axes. So with the plus uh, on the side of axis mappings, let's add a few. Actually, we need four. So the first one is going to be the throttle. And this will uh, allow us to drive forward and backward. So for the key, we're going to use a W. And I press on this button and then press W on the keyboard, which automatically associates the key. And then with this little plus, we add another key associated to throttle. And this time it's going to be S. And we have to change its scale to minus 1. So that uh, allows us to drive backward. So W is to drive forward and S to drive backward. The second axis is going to be steer, and we will use D to steer right, and then I'm adding another one, and will be A with a scale of minus 1 to steer left. And the other two axes we want to use to uh, control the spring arm, because we want to be able to look at the camera from different angles to see how it drives. Um, so let's create another axis called look up and uh, we want to associate this to the mouse y-axis and another one we call it look right and we want to associate it with a drop down to the mouse x-axis okay so far so good so these are all the inputs we need so let's close this it's automatically saved now we go back into our car blueprint and we start adding the inputs that we need so let's start with the throttle so right click and then type throttle and you find the access event throttle and let's do the same for steer there you go okay so what we want to do based on this input is to give a speed and a steering angle to our car to do that, we need few variables. So we go here under variables, and first we press the plus to create a new one, then we change its type to float. And let's start with max speed, and you can press F2 over a name to uh, rename it. Then we go right click, uh, duplicate, and we will call it current speed. So this is uh, respectively, these are respectively the max speed, the maximum speed the car can drive at and the current speed. And then we duplicate again. 
and we use max steering angle and duplicate again with the right click duplicate current steering angle and the way the inputs are going to work it's similar for the two so we take um, the axis values from the troll we multiply it by the maximum speed and you see that I took the variable dropped it directly onto the input pin so it creates a gap and then we assign the result to current speed Perfect. For the steering, we are going to do the same. So axis valid times multiply by the max steering angle. And we assign the value to the current steering angle. And if I drag this onto the execution pin, it will become automatically set, which is very handy. Okay. Compile and save. Uh, now max speed needs a value, and I'm going to use a value of 1000. This is 1000 centimeters per second, which basically is 10 meters per second. And we have fast car, we might have to go higher, let's see. And then the max steering angle, I uh, would like to use 45 degrees, which uh, should be appropriate for uh, the kind of car we are driving. Okay. So now we are able to set the current speed and also the steering angle for our car, but we need the car to react to it. So let's give ourselves a bit of room. And we'll be using the event tick. And what we want to do is drag out of the execution pin and say add actor word offset. And for that, we need to give a delta location. So what uh, this function does, it takes the current location of the actor and the word and adds a displacement to it. So delta location to it, a, a displacement. And the way we're going to calculate this displacement is by taking the forward vector of our actor. So get actor forward vector. We multiply it by the speed so the current speed and in a real engine 5 you see that uh, there is no different multiplications depending on the type of the variables it's automatically adjusted as soon as i drag onto it so now we're multiplying this forward vector which is unit vector unity vector by the the current speed and uh, that will be our forward speed but now to get from speed to delta displacement location we need to multiply by delta time so we drag out of uh, delta seconds from the tick function we connect the two and it doesn't want to do it so we're gonna do it the other way around multiply and then we connect to here and then we connect it here and actually i don't like that the pins are reversed so once you do that probably gonna work anyway no it doesn't like it and now it likes it okay we had to disconnect the pin to make it work it's a bit of quirk in the interface still now we have the displacement that uh, our actor gets on each tick and we should be already able to drive backward and forward with it so let's compile and save and go back to our level and press play and I'm pressing W and I'm driving forward and I'm pressing S and I'm driving backward. How cool is that? Okay, let's add the steering capabilities. So to uh, add the steering, give ourselves a bit more room, keep everything neat and organized. Um, we want to make the steering depend on the speed. So you would expect that uh, if you are standing still and steering, there is actually no rotation, but uh, the faster you go and uh, the, the more rotation there is. Uh, but anyway, it's proportional to that, like in a real car. Let's use a node called add actor word rotation this time. And we want to make this rotation speed dependent. So we need to use um, the speed. 
and we are going to multiply it by the steering angle, which is the current steering angle, and we are going to multiply it by a factor which we have to determine, which is a conversion between the speed and the rotation. So I'm gonna right click on this last pin that I added from motor variable. I'm gonna call it speed to rotation factor. And you can play a bit you know with that and see how it feels. But if I compile I can set its value and I like it to be at the moment 0 0.001. Okay. So back to the add actor word rotation node, we're gonna right click on the delta rotation, split the struct pin, and then this we won't connect to the yo, to the z, because we are rotating around the vertical axis of the car. And let's see how that feels. So close the blueprint, play, click. Now we drive forward. So we are rotating too much. So what is happening here is that the rotation should also depend on delta time. So what we can do is add another pin and uh, we can either connect the delta seconds from here or we can take the same value with the function get word delta seconds. So again, compile and save. Let's test again if this time is better. Yes, it is. Now we can drive back or forward. We can steer in both direction a bit. Really like a car. Maybe the speed is a bit too low. So we can do with uh, uh, edit or blueprint and uh, we change the max speed. Maybe let's go to 2000. Compile and save. Try again. Yeah, that feels more like it. Okay, that's cool. And of course we don't have the animations yet but that we're gonna fix shortly. First there is something that I want to fix this handling. It's bit rough because uh, I'm using a keyboard. Uh, it would be different if you were using a, um, a gamepad. But this moment is when I drive backward and forward, it stops abruptly. And also the rotation, it's um, really snappy. So we want to make that more progressive. And for that, we are gonna use a bit of interpolation. So back into the blueprint, Let's focus down here where we have the input axis. Give ourselves a bit more room. We take these two set nodes and we move them a bit to the right. And here I'm going to right click and search for filter 2. And this is a very handy node. So we take this output and we run it into target because that's what represents our target value. The return value we connect to current speed. Now for the current node, we need again the current speed that comes from the throttle. So we put it up here and we connect it here. Um, for the delta time, we can use the same node that we had before, that word delta seconds. And of course I could also you know, cache the value into a variable, but uh, we don't really need that here. And then interpolation speed, I like to use a four and you can test other values as well. Okay, let's do the exact same below. So I'm gonna select these two, control W and I'm gonna place them here. Connect the return value to the current steering angle, connect this to target. The current is gonna be the current steering angle. What data seconds we have, and interpolation is also four, which um, may work also for the steering. Okay, let's see, we got uh, more progressive movement, play. 
Yeah, so now I let the key go and the car takes a while to stop. Uh, the same record, I let the S key go and it takes a while to stop. And also the, yeah, steering gets more progressive and more controllable also with the keyboard. Huh? It's typically an arcade game. It might be played with the keyboard so not everyone has a gamepad and you want it to make you want to make it playable also in this situation. Okay, very nice. So it's time to um, add also the camera control. So I'm gonna go back to our blueprint and that's actually very easy. So right click, uh, remember that the functions, actually the events look connected to the camera control, look right and look up. And once we have them, let's bring in a reference to the spring arm. Now let me zoom and we're going to use add relative rotation. Connect into the excursion, right click on the delta rotation, split struck pin. And this is look right. So it means that we are acting on the vertical, around the vertical axis that's the yellow. And then select the node, Control W to duplicate, to bring it down here, connect the execution pin, make sure the light is straight because we like it so. Connect the spring arm reference, and this time it's look up. So we're gonna act on the pitch. Compile and save. And now let's see if we can go around our car with our camera. Very nice, so we have a full view. And we can also do it you know, while driving, so we see exactly. Maybe the car is a bit low on the ground. That's fine on the track. Perfect. We like it so. Okay, since we added it, let's uh, maybe add the in-car camera. So back to the blueprint. Um, let's go to Edit and then Project Settings. We want to add an input key to toggle between the chase camera and in-car camera. So this time I'm gonna use uh, action mappings. Click here, say toggle camera, that's a fair name for it. And then click on this, select the key value button and then press C on my keyboard and C is gonna be the key to toggle. Okay. Now, back to our blueprint let's write the function to toggle the camera maybe we do it here below the spring armor control but first we click on the skeletal mesh and add camera and this camera is parented to the skeletal mesh we call it in car camera and now let's go to the viewport see where that camera is it's sunk into the car so we put it the pretty much where the head of the driver will be, and maybe we give it also a slight inclination down. Yeah, that should do it. Maybe here, perfect. Compile and save, and then back to the event graph. Down here, let's take the toggle button, toggle camera. So that's the action event which we just created. And, um, the way you switch from one camera to the other is by activating one and deactivating the other. So let's drag the chase camera and the in-car camera. And what happens is that by default, the chase camera is the one that uh, it's active at the beginning as the first one it defines in the, in the hierarchy. And what we can do is create a flip-flop node And then from the camera here, we'll say set active. Connect to both of the flip flop uh, A and B output, and I will explain in a second why. Then let's duplicate with Ctrl W this node. Connect it here. Connect the Inca camera. And now we are using from the flip flop uh, this Boolean output. And we say not, and we connect it to new active, and this one we're gonna connect it to the other new active for the Inca camera. And let's route this, oops, route this nicely. 
Okay. And with that done, let's see whether we're able to switch from one camera to the other. So play, um, running, I press C, and now I am inside the car. And I press C again, and I am now again with the chase camera. That's fantastic. Okay, so what we are missing now is the animation of the wheels and of the steering wheel. So let's tackle that. Okay, so we are inside the blueprint for the car and we are going to use the event begin play and we are going to take a reference to the skeletal mesh of the car and do get anim instance. So we are retrieving a reference to the animation blueprint, but in a generic way, the one that is connected to the car. So we need to cast it, cast to, so we make it specific to our car. And with that, we take the output and we right click and we say remote variable and we call it an instance. So this will be a reference to a specific an instance with our car. And what we are going to do is to pass some values to it. And before we can do that, we need to go and edit it so that it can receive those values. So let's compile and save this one. And then we go back to our content browser under car. Here is the animation blueprint, by the way. So press the save all at this point. And we'll be asked to give a name to the track, uh, to the level, sorry. So I'm gonna create a new folder called maps as usual. And I'm gonna call it test map. Perfect. And once this is done, again into car, let's find the animation blueprint and open it. Okay, the animation blueprint is made by two parts. So you have, we have the event graph and we have the anim graph. And what we want to do is go to the event graph and we don't need this try get on owner because we're gonna talk to it directly from the car blueprint. We want to add few variables. And the one variable that we want to add of type float is speed. And the other one that we want to add is steering angle. And uh, this variable we will set from the car blueprint by talking directly to this uh, animation blueprint. Now we need a couple of other variables. Um, basically what we're going to do is take the speed, the linear speed of the car, and from it calculate the rotational speed of the wheels. And since we have rear wheels and front wheels with different radius, we need to you know the radius of each one and then we can calculate the rotation angle of each one. So basically let's add another float variable. We call it you know, front radius. That will be the radius of the front wheel. Uh, another one, we call it rear radius. And that will be the radius of the rear wheels. And now we're gonna add front rot angle. So that's the angle of rotation, which we assign to the front wheel to animate them. And then we have, you guess it, rear rod angle. And that's the angle of rotation we'll assign to the rear wheels to animate them. And each tick, uh, they will rotate by different angles and the reason, the reason is that the radius is different. So compile and save. Now we need to do some basic uh, math or physics, okay? So let's take the speed and this is the forward or backward speed of the car and we divide it by the radius and let's start with the front wheel so we take front radius in mind the fact that we have not assigned the value yet uh, we'll do it in a moment and now that we have this angular speed because when you have a linear speed divided by radius you get an angular speed we are going to multiply it by delta time so that we get an angle. And since this angle is in radians, because that's what you get when you divide the linear velocity in meters per second or centimeters per second uh, by a radius, which is also in uh, centimeters, 
uh, we will use a function which is called rad space two radians to degrees. Perfect. Okay, once we have the delta angle, because basically this is the delta angle given at each tick by the, the rotational speed that we all should have, we add it to the current angle. So we will get from angle and we do plus. And before assigning it back to the front angle, which I will do by dragging this here, we want to make sure that the angle is always in the range of zero from to 360. So we're gonna use a operation called modulus and you can type the percentage time to get it. And as a value here, we're gonna fill in 360. So every time the angle will exceed 360, for example, we come 361, uh, 360 will be subtracted from it and you will be left with the one degree. Perfect. Now, let's make this a bit prettier. Yeah. Now, what we want to do is uh, uh, do the exact same for the rear wheels. So I'm gonna copy this exact code, control W and bring it here and make sure we replace the variables which is very easy because i can drag one on top of the other so here we have front radius and i'm going to take rear radius drag it on top you see this little check mark says change node to rear the radius to rear radius yes so your lip going is automatically changed and uh, the front roll angle of course needs to become the rear roll angle now we need to assign to the variable uh, rear roll angle so i'm going to drag on top of the execution pit, I get a set directly. Give ourselves a bit more room, perfect. And we are missing the delta time, which goes in here. So let's reroute a bit of things. And actually let's do that. I'm gonna drag here, type RER, and I get the reroute node. Then drag out here, RER, reroute node. And from here we can connect up. So that's all neat and clean. And let's double check the, the variables names, make sure that everything is nice and aligned. And we are good to go with this part, okay. So now we have calculated the rotational angles to assign to each wheel so that the spinning velocity is um, linked physically to the um, linear velocity of the car. Now we need to create the animation, okay? So based on that information, back to the anim graph, we are gonna add a node called modify, transform modify bone. And as soon as we connect it to the output pose, it will create a component to local, which is uh, perfectly fine. So now we click on the node, we open up a bit here on the right. And I hope this interface gets a bit better next versions. Um, there are few pins that we don't need on this node. So we're gonna click on expose this pin and uncheck it uh, when it comes to translation and it's the same for scale. Perfect. And now let's start with the rear wheels, which are a bit easier. So we click on the bone, uh, on the node, sorry, and we select the wheel rear right. And then on the rotation, we expand the split struct pin. And so around which axis are the rear wheels ordaining? So let's go back to the skeletal mesh. Let's click on a rear wheel bone and then switch to the select and translate object, which is easier. And you see that the wheel is rotating around the Y axis, which is the green one. That will be the pitch axis, so back. Onto here, that's the one. So we take a reference to the rear rod angle and we connect it to there. And on the node, there is another thing that we have to set. So rotation, so rotation mode, replace existing because we want to fully control the rotation. And then we say uh, rotating space, bone space. Perfect. Now we have done the right. Rear wheel, 
and now we control W connect drag this a bit exact same value so also in the rotation pitch for the right rear wheel but now we have to change it to the left okay so now we have the rotation for both wheels and by the way if we compile and save and zoom on the rear wheels we should already be able to see this working and it's not because if we go to the event graph we have forgotten to give a value to front radius and rear radius so how do we find that value that's easy so we go to our physics asset let's click on the body for the rear wheel for example and now here under collisions primitives steers and open again you will find that the radius is 3.071147 and this should be right as 30 centimeters almost 31 and if we click on a front wheel we'll see 20.8 so almost 21 so let's use 21 and 31 so here back to the uh, event graph let's click on front radius front radius value we said it's 21 and rear radius volume it's 31 okay make sure we compile and save and now let's look at the wheel and they're spinning but as the speed is positive it's spinning backwards so it looks like we have a sign to fix and that's relatively easy to do so when we multiply here by delta time we can also add another pin and place a minus one and let's remember to do it also here and now we have inverted the way that the angles are added so now if we go positive with the speed we should see the wheel spinning forward perfect and of course the same happens So the front wheels once we have added their respective nodes but for the front wheel it's a bit more complicated because we also have to take care of the steering angle so let's go back to the anim graph and duplicate these two nodes with ctrl w but this time i want to put back the pin so i'm going to recombine the pin structure I'm going to connect them and then I'm going to I'm going to assign them respectively to the front left the order doesn't really matter front right as long as you're tapping the right wheels and now is the complicated part we need to combine two rotators so we're going to do combine rotators and connect this value to both and which rotators are we combining well that's very simple so we're gonna split both this and we are going to drag a reference to the front rod angle and we are going to connect it to the pitch and that's exactly like we did here with the rear rod angle but now we also need to take into account the steering angle which happens around the vertical axis so there will be a z axis here you know? so we take the steering angle and we connect it to the yo and that's pretty much it so save let's test it so if i give it a forward speed now we should also see the front wheel steering uh sorry rotating but we also see them steering All right and left brilliant so now we have the full animation of the wheels as well so compile and save let's see how it looks like in the level so i'm going to go back to level play and you see that nothing happens because we are not passing the values to the anim bp so what we need to do is open the uh, blueprint for the car and here on event tick 
let's take the reference to this anim instance that we created earlier on the gameplay and let's communicate to the animation blueprint the value of speed so just set drag out of it and search for speed and do you know, set speed and the speed is going to be our current speed and drag out and then save steering angle and connect them as well and the value of the steering angle is going to be current steering angle voila i don't like this inversion and crossing of paths so i'm gonna reverse them like this and maybe create a pin here and now they're not aligned so i'm gonna select them both and press q and now it's all tidy and aligned. This two as well. Q. Perfect. Compile and save. And now we should be able to see the animation happening in game. So rotate around our car. Oh, we can steer left and right. And we can also drive as we did before but this time the wheels are animated the problem is that there is a terrible motion blur so we're gonna turn that off so escape uh, to exit edit project settings search blur and you'll see motion blur and we're gonna turn it off for the whole project close play again yes much nicer and remember that we can switch to the camera in car perfect so the last thing left to do i think is to animate our steering wheel because at the moment it's not really steering so let's get out open the car blueprint uh, press on car uh, double click on the scalable mesh so that we can open it easily and then we go to the anim graph and we add yet another mode the same one modify so transform modify bone connect it well we don't need the uh, translation pin so we exclude it we don't need the we hide it we don't need the scale pin so we hide it again let's split the rotation pin and now we have to figure out around which axis our steering wheel is turning so if we go back to the skeleton mesh and then we click on the steering wheel and then we switch to the location tool which makes it easier to see the axis you see that it's turning around the red axis okay now note that the axis is not pointing out of the wheel but it's kind of pointing into the wheel so this uh, uh, might allow us to change a couple of things so let's see that uh, back to the anim graph let's take the steering angle and assign the same one to the x-axis which is the red one that we just saw and compile and save and then you know we can zoom onto the steering wheel and i think we already see something strange it looks like the wheel is totally reversed but what we can do here is maybe add 180 and recompile and then see if this time the wheel looks better so if we change the steering angle we don't see it moving because we didn't assign the node uh, the bone and we have to tell it also to replace existing and to work in bone space that's very much needed Compile, save, and let's see how the steering goes. Yes, so it looks like we have a steering wheel. Um, but actually, this is not correct. Let's see, this might fix it. Yeah, that looks more like it. Combine and save, and let's play. So let's go to our Inca camera. Oh yeah, 
now we have a nice steering wheel which follows the wheel and of course you can also uh, create a multiplier for it if you want to have it turn more or less than the wheels um, you can do that by multiplying the angle okay so the last thing that we want to fix uh, is um, let me show you so if we go to our car okay here in game and if I'm going to add an obstacle on the track so let's say for example a cube okay just put it down onto the track and maybe make it bigger okay now we have a gigantic cube on the track which is blocking us and play well we can go through it easily and you see a glitch but that's the um, collision detection of the spring arm which is reacting to the cube because that one detects collision but our car at the moment doesn't so we can easily go through something so how do we fix that that's super quick two things uh, so number one back into the bp for the uh, the blueprint for the car we find the actor word set node and we check the sweep option so this will check for collisions as the car is being moved forward or backward and the other thing is to click on the skeletal mesh and scroll down to collisions let's make this a bit more visible and you see that it says no collision so we want to change this and maybe say um, block all compile and save and now let's see if we can still drive through the cube and you will note something which is oh we cannot drive so what happens is that um, the car is reacting also with the terrain so it's kind of stuck into it uh, to fix that let's go back to the skeletal mesh of the car and then under physics uh, we want to select all the wheels body and then right click collisions no collisions save let's see if now we can drive and if we can still cannot drive we have to check a couple of things so first of all uh, the racing track we make sure that also has no collisions let's see whether that makes it better no so what could be the problem well we still have the body of the car so again let's go back to the physics asset editor and you see that the car is pretty low on the ground so it's very likely that this body is touching the floor below or we could also take away the collision from the floor but you know we can also raise this one a bit which will not make a big difference to the collisions of the car but should make it drivable let's see yes now we can properly drive around and we are being blocked by the cube as expected well actually there is one last thing that i'm seeing that uh, uh, i think we should fix so once i drive backward i like the car to steer more so it's okay when it drives forward but backward i think it should steer more so what i'm going to do I'm going to open again the blueprint for the car and um, down here we decide uh, um, you know how much we should rotate the car depending on the steering I want to add a multiplier but I want to add that multiplier only if the speed is um, negative so if we are driving backward give myself a bit of room here perfect and now uh, we are back into the event stick. I drive out of current speed. And I'm gonna compare it with zero. So is the speed negative? If it is, I'm going to use a select node, which is a very handy node. And connect its output 
to an additional multiplication pin here. And basically what this node does, it says, okay, if the speed is less than zero, so if it's negative, which makes this true, we want to multiply by two. So we get more rotation, right? With a negative speed. So when the car drives backward, if the speed is positive, so we're driving forward, this is false. It means that we want the one, so multiplying by one basically does nothing, so leaves uh, the value unchanged, so there will be no effect. So let's see how that looks like. So now we drive forward, and this is our steering. But if we drive backward, you see that we steer more. So that's exactly what we expected. And we can avoid our cube. And we can drive through our track. Let's switch to the onboard view. And here we go. All right. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions, any comment, please, as usual, feel free to use the comment box below and subscribe. And uh, let me know what you would like to see in the next tutorial. Bye.